to the cloud for today's session is T26, Introduction to Mobile Devices. Nowadays, mobile devices are becoming more and more necessary than an actual luxury. Back in the days, if we remember the brick, that was a luxury item. That is no longer a luxury item nowadays. This is especially true with smartphones, which are the most widely used mobile devices nowadays. In this session, we're going to learn and talk about the different types of mobile devices that you need to become familiar with. And we're also going to look at some of the common characteristics that a mobile device may have. You are most likely to encounter day to day with ease these mobile devices compared to the Palm Pilot back then, which had no nothing except for a syncing with a USB. And then when we had Bluetooth, we thought we had died and gone in heaven. Then came out the BlackBerry and just shot it right down. A mobile device like a uh, actual phablet, a tablet, even a notebook, a laptop, somehow they have been lost in translation and people believe that a laptop is not a mobile device. It And the, what is the tablet and the actual laptops were the original ones that were portable for those that maybe watch Star Trek and love as Star Trek as I do. You probably knew that way back when Star Trek actually created the tablet before it even existed, but that's just me, right? Otherwise, these mobile devices, though, we have learned that they don't usually use the OS that we're accustomed to on a regular computer. We're going to dig into a little deeper, which is the actual iOS, your Androids, your actual uh, Windows mobile. There is obviously other ones out there. I think it's called WebOS or God only knows how many OSs are out there for these mobiles. But the ones that we should be very familiar with is the three kings that are out there. Obviously, iOS and Androids are a leading competitor with these mobile devices. And then you have back there close third uh, windows which is obviously only when the Nokia nowadays and if you you if you really consider their surface which the surface is a mobile device this is where they're actually catching up ground and being able to uh, be considered a close third in this session uh, we're also going to learn and become familiar and hopefully our ultimate goal is to identify the mobile devices with ease and explain the, what qualifies them to be mobile, describe the characteristics of a common mobile device, which we said earlier could include your actual e-readers, your phones. We're going to compare and contrast the different platforms and capabilities and accessories of, of the actual mobile ports and the different types of mobile devices. Lastly, describe the role of a mobile device in today's society. Our actual BSMs that we'll be con concentrating into is going to be our adaptability and future orientation. Since these phones come out like if they were hotcakes, as soon as the first one just came out or the latest one, may, let me say, rephrase that for this year, about two or three months later, another competitor has come out or and or even Apple I've seen come out in which I know Steve Job is probably rolling over in his grave, came out with two phones in one year. Overall, we need to be able to adapt and be quick because every given OS is different. The iOS versus the Android OS, which is the web OS versus the actual Windows OS and any other OS that may be out there. As we're gonna learn, a mobile device is an electronic device that enables some kind of computing mobily and it, which is very small enough and easy to be carried around. Common mobile devices will include, and we're going to be covering is tablets, smartphones, wearable technologies, devices, phablets, e-readers, smart camera, GPS, uh, just to name a few. As I mentioned also, there is certain also ports specifically to these devices that are proprietary depending on the actual device itself. And as I mentioned, iOS, Android, and Windows Mobile are the major three platforms that these things run on. The type of variety of mobile devices is, is ever expanding nowadays. There is so many of them that we cannot even keep track of it and software which is on these devices make it relevant to be able to use them. As we know, if you bought the actual device, you actually bought the store. What do I mean by that? I want an Android, what do I gotta run? How do I get my, my stuff on there? Thank the Lord Jesus Christ that that is obviously uh, open source. 
yes, I must go to the Google Play Store, but I can install from unknown sources, which goes back to the Linux Foundation or whatever you want to call that foundation of what would they consider free for everyone, right? Now, as for your actual Windows and or your actual iOS, that is completely closed source, just like it was in the given areas of the actual computers. Tablets, as we see here, were some of the first types of handheld mobile devices, which are now typically found everywhere. These things used to be very rare. You'll see in the next slide that these things actually nowadays, since they have all these other stuff in there and they have the capabilities of having an actual SSD or an EMMC chip on it, right? And their typical size can range from between 10 to 15. I think even now we said 20 something on these tablets that are out there is ridiculous the sizes that they can actually go out. They're obviously designed as a type of notebook replacement. They don't have all the full features of a notebook or a laptop, but they do last longer. Once again, usually what we're trying to pay off here is processing power. In other words, whatever the device that I'm, I'm using is gonna use much more less power given also now that I have less processing power, again, less memory capabilities, right? These things are meant also to be running on the latest, I think it was lithium if I am I correct on these things, or is lithium ion batteries are the ones that they're running on now? Lithium polymer. I'm sorry? Lithium polymer batteries. Can't remember exactly which is the batteries, but they keep on coming up with, with obviously batteries and 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 they have their ratings of how long they last. They tell you exactly, except for the iOSs, which you can't see anything. You're not supposed to take those apart, any of the i devices. But usually, if you open up your actual Android and look at the battery, and or if you look at your laptops and you look at the battery, it tells you more or less the actual amount of amps that it has, or watts. Let me rephrase that. Questions yeah. on a tablet so far? Well, I didn't know they had something all the way back in 1972. As I told you, Star Trek invented the tablet. Yeah. As if you remember in Star Trek, those tablets were out and about way back when uh, in the movies and in the shows. And then I don't, don't see too many people that have this. But you know what's very close to this, which you probably never re really realize, and maybe those that maybe still remember this, that looks a lot like a diet, uh, like a, is it the diet? Is it called the diet? I think it's called the diet. You ever looked at the UPS guy when you come? It's not a diet. Is it called a diet? I remember what it's called. But it, you got a little signature pad. Yeah. And it gives you the brown thing. Mm -hmm. Very similar to the guy right there. And you might have also saw a little uh, game like the one that you could actually uh, go and spell. Was it Speller? What was it called? I can't remember his name. The cheap version of this. Speak and you spell? Know? Is it? Was it speak and spell? Yeah, I think so. It, that looked exactly like this once again. This is where they got their ideas and their designs and stuff like that. The speak and spell. If this guy right here in 1993, I bet you nobody knew Apple made this little guy right here. Hmm. I'll tell you the truth. Not until I saw this slide, I had no idea that this guy existed. I knew the Palm Pilot existed. I knew Windows had one. I never knew that in 1993, Apple came out with this little message pad. Hmm. That is completely new to me. I went until like, it was what, like about a year and a half already that I've been seeing these slides. Questions or doubts, obviously they have grown and we'll see here the Surface is considered obviously a tablet. There is the hybrid one, which the Surface, which is a full blown Windows on a tablet, which is called a, still a hybrid at that point. Any questions, doubts, evolution? Nope. Uh, the evolution of the smartphones compared to the bricks, you probably these are the ones that you're probably used to. These mobile devices, which are called smartphones, combine the fun actual functionality of a cellular. This is one that I told you the other day. I saw where everybody was basically threatening him 
you saw the little floppy, you saw the actual DVD, the CD-ROM, everybody was just surrounding this puppy and saying, are you the guy that took my job? Because this guy has a lot of things now. He is no longer just a phone. He has basically almost all functionalities that you need mobily, including being able to access your actual email for corporate, your Excel. God only knows you could do even presentation nowadays from these things. Mm -hmm. Any questions or doubts? Hopefully we know that some of these devices also have the capability of an SD card, as we all should know. Apple doesn't like you to touch their phones. So therefore, that is un it's you cannot upgrade an Apple that I'm aware of unless if something's changed. You can obviously change the SIM card if it does have the actual 4G, 5G, but you if you ever saw somebody taking something out of a app iOS device, that's what it is. They're just replacing the actual SIM card. They cannot add extra storage. As for your Apple and your Windows phone that I'm aware of, both allow in it. BlackBerry allows you to actually add those features. Once again, you have limited in processing power and in memory here compared to the bigger devices. You're tossing that up for actual portability and battery life. Most of these things, well, I think nowadays, all of them that I'm aware of, if it is a smartphone, let me rephrase that. If it is a smartphone, it has a capacitive touch screen. This is what gives you now the capability of being able to do the multi-touch sensor. Without this, if you had a resistive touch screen, you could only touch one spot on the screen. It also has the actual motion sensors. These things, even your laptops have the capabilities of understanding that this device was just dropped and it stops the actual hard drive from spinning and stops everything from working before it hits the floor to try to save the component, which is the hard drive. To try is the keyword. Obviously, we had a joke. We had a guy who was, which was the region vice president. He was a former football player. He was six foot seven. And since I was the telecom project manager, we thought it was cute since he had called in to get it repla repaired and it was escalated to telecom. We called him and left him a voicemail stating that his smartphone called us and with a distress call and that we're <laughs> calling the uh, 911 to dispatch. He didn't think it was too cute, but we thought it was cute. Obviously, 6.7 feet to the floor, didn't make it. And it wasn't clear near his ear when he dropped it. So <laughs> anyways, back to our previous program. Enough about me. Now we can see the brick, the guy on the left. That is the brick for you young folks that have no idea what I keep on talking about. You probably saw this in the old James Bond movies. And that's the Motorola 8900. Everyone knows it as the brick. No one knows his real name. I have sold every last one of those phones. <laughs> no, these are these are the ones that came out here obviously these are mobile phones compared to obviously smartphones this is the evolutions of your actual mobile phone becoming actual smartphone as we see here these things eventually became smart and when the I, I, iphone came out there is no doubts obviously that that is a smartphone the blackberry was a smartphone as for the Samsung, that I don't believe was a, you could only text that I'm aware of for of this one here, the E250. As yeah. for the Galaxy, yes, that is a smartphone. Yeah. We understand the difference now between a mobile phone and a smartphone, hopefully. Mm -hmm. It's the operating system. Exactly. It has to have something. The key thing is it has to have more than texting and calling. As long as it doesn't, if, it, if it's not SMS and it's not a regular phone call and it's got a screen that I can touch, then you got a pretty good chance that if it has apps, uh, it's a smartphone. Uh, the Nokia 6210, it had, infra, it had an infrared transmitter on the top of it. And you could use it to change the channels on your TV. Yes. The 6210, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we did that. We actually did that when we were eating lunch once. And uh, we started changing the channels on the guy and the guy in the bar. He didn't notice who it was, yeah. but we thought it was awesome. 
that that's was when technology one. was starting to get cool. <laughs> Every time he's winning, put but went back, and we just went put it back put to the sports channel that we wanted. He was like looking around. He started blaming the other guy. You know, you're not think you're funny, but that's not funny. Stop changing it. <laughs> uh, good old days. The good old days. I'm sorry. Back to our previous programming. <laughs> now, in reference to our actual wearables, these are the devices nowadays that a lot of people like. These devices can be worn. Keyword: Why it's called wearables? They can be worn on the body, and so that's why they're called wearable technology devices. These wearable devices go through different categories or different functions that they can have. You, as we know nowadays, the smart watches are very, very smart. These puppies can even control, and you can see the camera on your phone. So therefore, if you feel like taking yourself a picture, you can actually put it on the tripod and you no longer need that stupid stick. You could actually go to your smart watch and click the button and take a picture or you can do anything that you can usually do on the phone on the actual uh, watch due to the Bluetooth technology and the sync that it has. You can read your emails. You can answer the phone. You can do basically anything that you can do on the phone itself. So now you look like Dick Tracy and I can stop laughing at that movie. <laughs> Any questions? Dick Tracy invented this in 1930 something, by the way. Yeah. Everybody thought it was the dumbest thing in a movie, the silliest thing. Who would ever be talking to that? You ever gonna see? In, no, Diego, you're never gonna see that. One hundred years later, here we are. There you go. Questions or doubts on the actual technology? I could go on. Obviously, these things have all different functions, all different things. As your Fitbits are the actual ones that do just that. Obviously, now what I love about I uh, about Apple is they hopped onto this and they went even further for those that do have these actual IO, uh, iOS watches. These puppies do not only this, but they'll actually monitor your heart rate. They'll do even do a cardiogram or I don't know what other thing that it does. It's just ridiculous what these smart watches are able to do or smart devices that are wearable. One of them that is out there is also the actual given glasses. You have the Google Glass that's out there. That is one of the reasons why they asked me, actually asked me to take off my, my glasses every time I take on an online test to ensure that it is not linked to anywhere else. Any questions or doubts? I'm pretty sure you guys have also seen the VR ones out there, but these things are obviously pretty cool. Again, copying, as we saw in previous technology in the movies, then now into reality. As for the next range is your phablets. Now your phablets are really phones, but they're tablets. Hence, they're phablets. What happens is a phone is a phone. For God only knows who bought that Samsung. And then they're like, hello? Yeah? yeah. Uh-huh. Well, that's a phablet. I know. They, I understand. They believe that they have a mobile phone in their hand or a smartphone. That, on my friend's is a phablet what they have in their hands. That's what it's called. It also has the capabilities of using an actual little pen. And the same thing with the tablets. They have specialized pens that you can use or pencils, whatever you want to call it, which allow you to actually with, with ease, color, write, or design and do whatever you want to do instead of be your, my big fat finger, which is too big to be able to, not that I can actually draw, but at least I can hopefully color in between the lines. Your e-readers themselves, these are more mobile devices that we uh, are need to be accustomed. These e-readers themselves are very similar in size of tablets, but they lack the full functionality of a tablet. These e-readers, their main purpose is that, to be able to read newspaper, your books, your magazines, anything you wanna do to read, go in or browse the internet it is not meant for a tablet purposes. It is not meant to replace a tablet. If you want the functions of a tablet, you need a tablet. So when you get upset, you bought a Nook and you, all you could do is just listen to music, go on, I think, to a browser and uh, obviously read books. People sometimes get upset because they don't know what they bought. 
So an e-reader has very minimal functions compared to that. What's well, one great feature about it though, it does do great in high lit areas. Don't get confused because a lot of people get confused on this thing. You, if you ever take your phone outside and you try to look at the screen, even if it's blasting on brightness, a lot of the times you can't see the screen. These puppies can actually take the sunlight and say, ha, I can still read this. Yep. Questions or doubts on an e-reader or a tablet? Just remember, if it looks like a phone, but it's bigger than, I would say, I think it's five and a half or seven seven inches, somewhere around there, it's got to be a family. It's ridiculous. If it looks ridiculous in your hand, it's got to be a family. Yeah. All right. Now your smart cameras themselves. The smart cameras, these puppies are obviously devices that are out there and they must have smart technology in there. They can't just have a digital screen in the back, which confuses a lot of people when they see the latest and greatest ones because they all look cute and they look like if they actually have something, but they don't. Unless if it tells you it's a smart camera, it's not a smart camera. It's just a ca camera with a GUI interface so you can be able to interact with the actual camera. Everybody agree? Now, what does that mean? It has robot guidance, biometric recognition, and it even has code reading verification. Some of these things can actually, actually read, I think, also QR codes and other things to make it very even more smart. Some of them even have GPS integrated into them. And what is GPS? Good question. It's the Global Positioning Satellite System itself. It is what has been used in our TomToms way back in the day. And now ha it has bled into the mobile device. There goes my ice cream truck. Five minutes late. I'm really going to have to complain about this to the ice cream society. I'll see you guys in five minutes. You got to change your CMOS battery. <laughs> now back to our previous program. As we mentioned, these devices, the GPS itself is a technology that's been out for a while. Now it is integrated into these mobile devices, depending on the actual mobile device capabilities. This thing actually uses three different satellites. In total, there is 24 satellites out there, 18 which are currently live at all times. And that I'm aware of, there is always six in standby, if I remember my numbers correctly. Each satellite is obviously equal distance and a certain distance from you, and they know exactly what the distance is. And since they're able to bounce this based on military tactics and or mathematical equations, some guy in somewhere in Asia, I'm pretty sure that's where math came from, they, they were able to calculate what they call triangulation. Based on three different foreign objects, you're able to calculate exactly where you are in the world. Obviously, depending on the actual line of sight and or issue that they may have, this can be obviously uh, where you see on your Google Maps or on your whatever map you're looking at, where the circle now becomes a humongous circle because it's not able to pinpoint exactly where you are, but it is at least giving you a 200 to 300 feet distance or more or less of where you are. Now, what's also awesome about these things is that it's able to maintain itself with the network so it can actually see what your actual acceleration is and which way you were supposedly going so then it actually helps out so even though it's kind of not knowing where you are it takes the assumption in there and since there is a highway that's right next to this road and you're flying at 75 it will assume that you are actually on the highway and not on the street or on top of a house Next, here is the actual screen technologies that these things have. As we know, these things have integrated screen, which have the LCD panel itself is the most less 
expensive, which is used as the actual twisted pneumatic that we mentioned before on actual monitor devices before. And uh, they also have the IPS or the in-plane switching, which gives you the richer colors for better viewing angles. If you ever remember, or I don't know if I was here for that, that is the one that whenever you were in those old big screen TVs. If you ever had to be at the edge of the couch, you always hated it because you couldn't see the darn thing because obviously this technology was not created. And then all you saw was kind of a dull kind of faded out. As for the latest and greatest, that is the beautiful torture device of the OLED screens, which I'll continue to go to PETA to until they actually get rid of these things. But nowadays, obviously these things are either resistive touchscreens or capacitive. The majority nowadays, we said capacitive touchscreens, since that is the latest and greatest, it is able to calibrate, recalibrate itself with ease, no user interference, gives you also the capabilities to be able to go ahead and use your multiple finger gesture and with ease be able to zoom in, zoom out and do whatever it is that you want to do versus the actual resistive touch screens, which obviously are resistive. That's the old screen that uh, you're, you're touching and you have to be like forcibly with that special little plastic more likely pen than the soft tip pen that you'll see for the cap the capacitive touch screen. Sorry, excuse me. As I stated before, these are the two screens. Any questions or doubts on the characteristics of these touch screens and or how they're used? Please note that obviously the resistive touch screens since they are the older ones, they are the rougher ones. And at the same time, they can be more accurate at times than the other ones. What do I mean? Pretend nowadays where we're going and I'm pretty sure it happened to you guys and we're wearing our actual little medical gloves because we look like if we're actually some type of nurse or God only knows a doctor nowadays, we got our mask on. So they're actually obviously coming up with, with the facial recognition to be able to see your mask. But one thing that this capacitive touchscreen, if you ever tried to do it with a glove, especially those that live in cold area, is unable to feel for some reason the glove. I can't tell you exactly why I'm not that high tech in reference to touch screens, but I can only tell you that it needs a special pen usually on those devices. And if you have like gloves or something on there, it's not going to be able to interact as easily. Your finger has a certain amount of conductance and you can get gloves with special uh, like metal sewn into the fingertips so that you can use them. Oh, well, that's nice. But I'm pretty sure the plastic gloves that we're buying for the, the, for the, for the pandemic, I'm not sure if those will work. But as for regular gloves for cold and being able to do that, that's a nice feature. Yeah, I know those latex gloves don't work. <laughs> All right. Um, what else do we have here? Let's see. For the built-in cameras, those things are the great things that most of these things have. Nowadays, they have like 500 cameras. Sorry, I just find it too cute. I just don't understand it. It really doesn't make sense to me. You got your front facing camera and then you have your rear facing camera, which now became like 600 cameras. I have to continue to exaggerate, just get used to it. Now you have, if anybody can tell me why I would need a camera who can do the humongous panoramic with ease, one that can do micro, one that can do regular. What? Why don't I just buy a camera? Making movies. <laughs> yeah. That's it's just it's ridiculous that's the happy, amount of cameras. That's your happy medium. You got people who don't want to commit to a professional camera where you can zoom and stuff like that. And cell phones are incapable of having a zoom lens on it. So that's why you got they have six different cameras because each one, one's going to be for wide angle, already set. One's going to yeah. be for zoom, already set. Another one's for standard. If you had a zoom lens on there, that's not going to be sticking out about that far out the front. Well, have you seen so you it? Would... Have you seen it that they actually sell it now for, for actual phones where you could actually latch it yeah. onto the yeah. phone? Yeah. And it yeah. had... yeah. mm -hmm. That is hilarious when I saw that. I was like, that's a, big a camera. 
yeah. buy yourself some cam. Yeah, that's got to be expensive as it is. You you you're buying yourself an expensive zoom lens. Just get yourself a camera. Yep. I don't know. I'm always touchy about these things. I'm all for the CD and for the floppy drive to keep them alive. <laughs> I don't know. All right. <laughs> Next feature that we have here, the actual microphone that obviously allows us to actually speak across from the analog world to the digital world and back to the analog world throughout the speakers that is in this given devices. Hopefully by nowadays, we should do understand what a microphone is and it's obviously integrated to these mobile devices. It's not only the laptop support, your phablets, your tablets, all these devices have microphones usually integrated. And me again, or is it just repeating again GPS? What is it trying to do? See if I know what the definition is? GPS, we said what it was. But another thing that you need to understand is that this puppy though, even though that that you have the GPS, you understand that it's only giving you coordinates. Everyone understand that? Giving you long, longitude and latitude coordinates, your mobile data and or the application that's installed on the given device is the one that's updating. So then you might see sometimes that you can see the spot where you're at and you're like, well, where's the map? Well, that's because your data is slower than the actual coordinates that are being received. And so it's trying to upload or download, sorry, download the actual map of where you're at to be able to put it on that grid. And at times, even if your actual GPS goes down completely, these phones are able to use the actual radio and or Wi-Fi to try to help again, assume and triangulate a location. It's not as accurate, but it can still use it. So whenever there's a very high big rain, and at least if I can get some type of data connection, again, that now that big humongous little circle became that big humongous circle that's on the outside with the little dot in the middle. That's the reason why it's not able to perfectly triangulate where you are. Now for the internal storage, as we know, these internal storage on these things are getting smaller and smaller. Thank God to the SSD drive. Now our mobile phones can actually get even smaller. Obviously, some of these things have the non-volatile flash memory to be able to store the information, which makes them even skinnier. This type of memory obviously consumes much less power than the actual magnetic drives or your SSD drives. And since there's no moving parts or obviously since it is just flash memory is much more energy efficient co compared to the other storage mediums. A lot of, of these mobile devices have expandable storage for the SD, but the uh, actual SD, as we know in the iOS is those are not really available. As for the ones that are available, usually those mobile devices, you can go up to wherever your pocket can go. Nowadays, I believe we go over 200 gigs, 500 gigs or so, or even terabytes, some ridiculous of these SD cards. I haven't bought one because I refuse to pay for what I already paid for. Uh, you can see I don't trust technology at all, do I? I don't know why I'm even here. All kidding aside, since I do know what it does, I just don't trust it. Therefore, that is one of the reasons why I usually do not add anything and or do anything with my mobile devices. Here's an iPhone, a mobile device. Can someone please help me out? Yes. <clears throat> yes, it's mobile. Okay. Yep. Number two, a Nikon camera. Is that a mobile device? Yes. Everyone agree? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Sax Samsung Galaxy Tab S2. Yes. Yep. Okay. A Amazon Kindle Fire. Yes. Yep. A, sorry. PlayStation 4. No. No? Although I know I somebody it. who has one in their car. I can make it mobile. I can make it mobile. <laughs> yeah, I can do it mobile too. I got an inverter in my, I used to have an inverter in my used to car. 
All right, Blackberry Passport and Joseph, you can't. Yes. you can't answer. They can't yeah. answer that when I told you you can't answer that. You oh, I'm that sorry. <laughs> uh, that one was so famous in in UPS that Blackberry Passport. As soon as it, it came out, everybody that was a big wig must have it. It's as big as a passport. All right. So, anyways, back to the Apple Watch. Is that a mobile device? Yep. Right. Interesting. So far, everything's been mobile except for the PlayStation. Uh, iPod Shuffle. Damn. Yes. Everyone agree? iPod Shuffle is a yeah. mobile device. Okay. Awesome. iPad without a cellular function. Is that a mobile device? Yes. Yes. A telescope. Yes. Not, it's mobile, but not really traditionally mobile. Something you put in your like, um, hey, you take it out to the woods, look at the moon. Depends mobile. on how big. I mean, big telescopes are definitely not mobile, right? Oh, mobile yeah. device, people. I'm not talking about think, is it mobile? It's, well, it's not it's electronic, so I would say it doesn't mobile. fall under the area of a device, so not a mobile device. Not in what we're talking about, it's not mobile. So it's mobile yeah, device must be plug in coordinates. A, a on mobile okay. Okay, we could go into that. I totally agree with you, and we could put that answer. Not a problem. A mobile device must be a in hence in this case of what we're talking about: laptops, notebooks, tablets, uh, mo um, smartphones. Smartphone is a mobile device. See how I changed the word you for you here? A smartphone is a mobile device. Now, also, my smart cameras are mobile device. My actual PlayStation, technically, if I want to rig it somehow, I can take it mobilely somewhere, but it is not a mobile device. A traditionally mobile device, yeah. Can I do anything except for play PlayStation? I mean, it, obviously, it could probably go onto the internet. I think it has. Let me rephrase that. Nowadays, it has a whole bunch of things. But obviously, it's not a traditional mobile device. It doesn't have a touch screen. It doesn't let you really do anything except for what it is. And it should you should have additional stuff attached to it, like a screen, right? It's not inclusive, everything together. So no matter how you try to rig it, a PlayStation is not. Now... The little PlayStation or whatever you call that other one, if it has all the features of the Switch, what a mobile device, Nintendo Switch, the Switch, the PS Switch Pro, everything that doesn't all those have little ones, though. but it's not smart though, is it? You have to Nintendo it has Switch to have a Nintendo Switch is not smart. I could only play in Nintendo games on it. Oh, I see what you're saying. You you can do one thing. What it's intended is not in our mobile category. It's not a mobile device. It has to be as smart as a smartwatch, as smart as a smart camera, as, as smart as a smartphone. See, I keep on mm -hmm. putting these words in there, and I keep on telling you smart. Mm -hmm. Therefore, yeah, whatever so I'm Under that to definition, you, a telescope, telescope is not mobile. Not mobile. Unless if I told you it was a smart telescope with gps and whatever other stuff that we just talked about a moment ago. unless you add Agreed? something to it yeah okay so i would have to tell you that it it itself has th that model that's a smart telescope that's a smart camera and we can make that okay G all of it. gps is that a mobile device no that's a system it's Global positioning system. It it works mobily. The whole thing is, I mean, the GPS. Uh, you can have GPS on your phone. You can have GPS on your tablet. You can have GPS a GPS device that you put in your car, like I did when I drove Uber. Is it smart? Is it smart? Um, not when you. Well, you said GPS that system. Enough, That's right? It has to be smart, though, doesn't it? That's got to be able to, one, triangulate your location and update the coordinates on a given map. Yeah, so it's smart, and it's smart and it moves, so I guess. More and we more just said that if I add GPS to the actual telescope, 
if I add those features to it, it is automatically now became smart. Yeah, so under that definition, GPS would be mobile. I think so. I don't know. We'll soon find out. I agree with you guys on everything because I completely forget everything until we actually view, view the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I get amnesia every time we take a test. TAs haven't been able to figure it out. Neither has the doctor. I don't know why. All right, all kidding aside. Now, what's going to be very interesting and maybe very eye-opening were some of the choices that we made. We unfortunately assumed that because of the fact that some of these things sounded that they were a mobile device, that in true, they were smart. Mm -hmm. This mobile device, which is the actual Kendall, yes, but a PlayStation 4 isn't... Where am I going? Come back over here. We missed Stop two. Jumping. Stop jumping. Here we are. Nikon camera. At no point does that Nikon camera even tell you that it is a Nikon S camera or a Nikon S2 or a Nikon uh, smart something or other. Yeah, the Nikon camera isn't mobile for the same reason that the telescope isn't mobile. It's not smart. It's right. not smart unless if it told you it was smart. It's got to tell you in the name. What do I mean by that? Here we are. Hopefully you can still see this. Can you see this? No. Or you still see the test? You're on the internet. We can see you. Go back to it. Okay. All right. That's weird because uh, with my Canon camera, I can geotag pictures that I take. So it That's gives a smart me camera. So That's a me smart camera. Mm -hmm. All right. And here you are. Here's the regular cameras. All their regular cameras right here. They look sophisticated, look beautiful, has a little screen. Not the ones that, that they have in regular are actually their actual ones. They have those smart cameras, though. The ones that have all those other features, which I believe are, mm -hmm. are these. I got them, too. The, the D6 and um, all of those. And you see? Oh, you can geotag those. Geotag that does all the things that you want on top of just take the picture. It does much more. All right. So unless if it told you it was a model specifically, a series of being smart, then it's not smart. It's just a regular camera mm -hmm. or a regular telescope. Yeah. So which two did we miss now? Oh, that would be your iPod Shuffle. I thought that was so cute how we automatically assumed that an iPod Shuffle is a mobile device. Oh, iPod Shuffle, now I'm thinking about it. That's just a music device that changes the order the music is played. He's about this big now. Mm -hmm. That's the iPod Shuffle. You were thinking about either the iPod Nano or the iPod one that looks like, like, a, a, like a, a, a phone, which is, is, mm -hmm. is not. The iPod Shuffle is the old iPods that we had that has a little circle in the middle that you can actually change. And some of them have a little screen. Don't get me wrong. But as uh, one of you just alluded, it is, is for listening to music. That is his job. He's not smart. Any questions or doubts? Nope. And now for their actual iOSs, as I mentioned before, there is mobile devices which have their own proprietary OSs. Unlike your notebook, your desktop, these OSs contain the mobile features and you basically bought their store. The most common ones that we mentioned were the Android, the iOS, the Windows phone. While each phone has their own features and, and or intricacies. We also mentioned that out of all of them, the only one that allows you to do from unknown sources is the Android. All of the, all the other ones, you are purchasing exactly what is available in that given store. That's why we should be careful whenever we're buying this. And usually the companies are fully aware to make sure that they understand so that they can be able to use it correctly in their business. Any questions or doubts? Next one, what we have is the actual BlackBerry OSs themselves. That is for the BlackBerry itself. It was research in motion. They hung their hat 
on the enterprise world and were making millions until they got sued in reference to their actual encryption which was basically immune to viruses and or obviously being hacked they were basically impenetrable according to blackberry Obviously, these phones, until they got sued or this BlackBerry OS, was predominant within the actual corporate world, did not require anything that was third party. One of the great things that it did have was what they called a BlackBerry server that you can put inside the ent enterprise farm. And now you'll be able to fully control every given phone in the enterprise before these new fancy little things have come out to be able to obviously uh, do the MDM which is a mobile distribution manager and or any other ones to be able to facilitate the process. Next one we had was the actual Symbian, uh, which was also gone after 2012. You have your web OS, which used to be the Palm OS or the Palm Pilot, which nowadays a majority of these things are, are pretty much not being used. You hardly see anybody buying these HP tablets. Your Bada, which is a Samsung OS, is for the... Uh, actual three types of phones that they have out there from the Samsung's that is gone no longer be used because they hung their hat on to the actual Android world you have your Migo which was replaced by Tizen and Tizen is what the majority of these smart TVs Rukus and God only knows whatever else is out there even your your actual uh, cars nowadays have a Tizen OS to be able to facilitate the entertainment systems in there Anybody stream your stouts? All right. So your iOS is in the three major guys. You should hopefully know that anything that starts with an I is an iOS device, iPad, iPhone. The only thing that does not go into the Apple world would be what? Anybody want to humor me? What is the next OS that I should know that is a mobile OS? A mobile devices OS. Um, the OS for the watches. That is correct. What is it called? Uh, Wear OS. Almost there. You're so close. It does start with a W. I don't know that one. Okay. And you said the word actually, and you don't even know. Wear yeah. OS. I thought. No. no. He he said he he just said the word again. What I watch? <laughs> watch OS. Watch OS. <laughs> okay. I think it's <laughs> unless if they change the name and I'm completely gone can see now that I remember it is called Watch OS. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Google it. But if that is what I remember it's called, Watch OS. They will test you on that somehow, somewhere. Try to trick you and mess with you. Watch OS. Yeah, the only Apple product I got is my tablet. I'm in Wear OS, correct. Diego. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? It's Wear OS. The Wear OS for now, for the new phones, you're saying? I mean, for the new... Uh, uh, that's what Google rebranded it to a few years ago. But Google would be a Google product. I'm talking about yeah. I, the I. Apple Watch OS is correct. Watch OS, Apple. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so that's where we probably got lost. Sorry about that. Sorry for the confusion. Uh, for the Windows Mobile, the only devices that currently have it is the Nokia phone. The Nokia Lum Lumia is the one that has a Windows Mobile. And as I stated, the reason why they're closed third is because of the Surface itself. That is a Windows Mobile platform OS. Yeah. And the only other devices which has a plethora, as we see here on the right, is the Android, which has a Samsung Galaxy, the Nexus, so Sony, everybody and their mom pretty much is riding the Android. Sorry, excuse me. Any questions or doubts on the devices and the OSs that it, they're running on? All right, next area we have here is the actual different types of accessories that are available to these given devices. As we see, some of these things are actually proprietary to these given devices. And sometimes uh, they themselves cannot be even used maybe for the next 
model that comes out, which is very annoying. You have your headsets, your speakers, protective covers, game pads, docking stations, credit card readers, memory, char car chargers, and stylus pens that we can obviously review. So you have your micro USB and mini USB ports to be able to get in. And as you see, your Apple has a lightning port. You can actually connect in your PAN network with your Bluetooth, or you can use the near field communication. As we learned, the NFC is the one that has the shortest distance to be able to create the transactions, which I'll never trust in my life, but you can continue to use it. It is a radio fre frequency ID that is tagging, that is used to be able to use you and identify you with the device and communicate with the device to be able to create the transaction that it gives the actual information of your cards to the device. Obviously, any other other connection that may be out there, there will be some of these devices still out there that have specific proprietary adapters or physical connectors, be the power and or USB connector itself. It can be in either an A, B, MIDI, A, as we saw and various sizes. C nowadays is most predominant when it comes to these mobile devices. Lastly, the majority of them have jumped on to the hotspots. What do I mean by that? Back in the days, even though the actual providers was not giving that, since we did have a data network to ride on, Edge or any other one, and since we had a PAN network, we were able to obviously, without the actual provider knowing, technically we thought, be able to actually create our own little hotspot by using the Bluetooth to able to stimulate a router with that given mobile device, hence the, the actual birth of the word hotspot, so that you could be able to use your Wi-Fi and or your Bluetooth, or nowadays even your USB to be able to share your data network from the mobile phone. A lot of these things obviously uh, prior to that, you probably got a death threat from AT&T stating that if you continue to do that, they will terminate your contract. Therefore, some of these people were obviously quickly stopping it and or purchasing the new feature that they came out with, which was your mobile hotspots. They're done. As we see here in this chart, the majority of the people nowadays own mobile phones. Therefore, what's even scary about this is the amount of carpal tunnel and or damage that we're doing to our necks. You'll be surprised how many people just stay completely on these mobile devices throughout the day and they do not let it go. Specifically, children nowadays spending so many hours it's just incredible the amount of hours that they're on a mobile device but key word is mobile device you might say okay they're not on the phone the whole day okay go look at them then they're all of a sudden they're on their little nintendo little thing then they go onto their phone then they go onto their tablet then they go back onto their laptop hence even worse some of them now start also are hardcore gamers and now they got a smaller little thing where they're just twiddling their thumbs and hacking onto buttons either which way these mobile devices have many capabilities and support the needs of the actual business and one of the reasons why they're growing into numbers because of the production that is helping within the workforce no matter much how much diego cries about people breaking their fingers and or hurting their necks any questions or doubts Over the 62% of the adult population are using the mobile phones. Obviously, now we can even see why the birth of IP version 6 is just, it's just ridiculous. The amount of devices that are connected directly to the Internet. Prior to that, mobile devices did not require an IP on the actual, sorry, mobile phones, not devices. Prior to that, mobile phones did not require any IPs on the actual internet because they were not connected to the internet. Nowadays, there's many people that even are taking their actual calls or Zoom calls or team meetings on these devices. It'd be, be even in, inside your little, uh, while you're ordering your little grande or tall, 
you can actually sit down there or eat your little McDonald's and get the McDonald's Wi-Fi of kids like to make fun of nowadays. I don't know what exactly that means, but somehow that's a joke. And then you can actually sit down and be part of a meeting. Somebody can explain to me what McDonald's Wi-Fi is so I can it laugh along. super slow. Oh, that's super. what I mean. Yeah, that, that's for old folks. No, that makes fun. That, that, that's cute. Yeah, that's it's cute. not broadband. <laughs> that's what we used to laugh at as dial-up when we used to say dial-up. No, they're just calling it McDonald's Wi-Fi. That's cute. What we used to call DSL, too, when we first got, got cable or fiber optics. People go, oh, you're still on DSL? That's as good as dial-up. And the which way, any questions or doubts, hopefully by now we all should have an idea of what these mobile devices are and understand that they are becoming a necessity. It's no longer that brick and a luxury of paying $100 a month just to be able to have 50 minutes. Yeah, it was ridiculous. I still remember that. Those things were pretty, just as the one that was inside the, the actual car phones, if anybody ever saw that humongous big yeah. thing that was inside the phones, those were great. But obviously those were mobile phones. Hopefully we've been educated on these little trick, tricky words that they're gonna start throwing on us. A mobile device is a device that is smart and it's mobile. This is one of the key things that we need to understand. It is an electronic device that enables some kind of computing power for you. And it's small enough to be able to carry on in your hand. So hence, unfortunately, a regular camera, although I can move it around, it's not, if it's not a smart camera, then it is not considered a mobile device. Any other questions or doubts? Uh, can you tell me what's the difference between iPad, phone, and watch? I think only the size or anything else? All of them, all of them are, are mobile device. And you are correct. By using the word, you have, have identified a mobile device. If I tell you a laptop, which is a mobile device, you can picture in your head that it is this big rectangular thing that has a lid that opens up and has a screen and it's the largest out of all the mobile devices that are available. Some of them have a touch screen. If I tell you now a smart watch, you already are assuming that this must be either an Apple watch or one of those Google watches or whatever watch that's in there. What's even funnier is for CompTIA, you must know what a watch OS is, but as you notice, I never even asked you a word about what any other watch OS is out there. I don't know why, but somehow they want you to understand that the watch OS exists compared to the iOS is for the other mobile devices of the actual Apple products. So anything that is smart, it fits in your hands and or can be wearable as long as there's a smart technology, any of these, which includes phablets, tablets, smartphones, wearable technology, the actual Google Glass, right? That's a smart technology. There's also some of these virtual reality headsets that I've seen that you can do stuff with them and create designs and go into and do weird things. I don't know what it does exactly because I've never really paid with that, but I've heard that you could actually use those things to go into the virtual world and do whatever it is that you virtually would do in the real world. Once again, I'm never wrong, just misinformed. So if somebody lied to me, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or doubts? Does that help out? So all of these that we've covered today are mobile devices. The words should help us be able to identify out of all the mobile device, which device are we talking about when we're mentioning these words? We have our e-readers, smart cameras, GPSs, Wearable technology, smartphones, tablets, phablets, smart cameras, right? Even as we said, there is even smart telescopes out there. Somebody even went out there and said, okay, yeah, telescope is physically mobile. I can take it from here to here. But unless if it has a GPS and some other integrated things in there to help you, 
then technically it's not a mobile device. It needs to be smart in some way or form. Any questions, doubts? All right, my friends, up to here is where I go with this one. I'll stop the recording for this session of T26.